Hello guys and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel with another update video and this is on something that I've been working for the last two weeks so this is going to be the first of its kind uh, because I haven't seen this uh, anywhere on YouTube so let me take you to my backyard and show you what we have. So here we are in the backyard of my house on this beautiful bright and sunny January morning in New Delhi. We haven't had sunshine for the last week or so, but today has been different. There's a lot of sun shining since morning. The birds are out of their nests and the squirrels are out of their burrows, enjoying the warmth of the weather in a rather gloomy week. The temperatures over the week dropped down to almost 5 degrees Celsius, but today it's been pretty sunny. The trees and the grass are swaying in the slight warm breeze here. So, of all the beautiful things in nature, here is another beauty that I want to talk to you about. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is the completed model of the MiG-31 Foxhound. So let me talk to you about the assembly of the model. The parts have fit together with great ease and there was hardly any flash on the kit. The model has come together very well. The only place where some filling was required was the seam line stretching from the nose to the canopy which I filled with modeling putty and sanded it off. Other than that, the model didn't require any filling or sanding. Moving on to the underside of the plane, I found it a challenge to fit the rear undercarriage into the slots available. The slots weren't deep enough to accommodate the wheel housing, so I had to sand that off and make it deeper for the wheels to align and fit. The nose wheel went in without a hitch. There were two R-33 missiles and two drop tanks available with the original kit, but I wanted to give the jet a more lethal look of an interceptor, so I improvised. I had two spare R-60 missiles from an older MiG-29 kit and two spare R-40 missiles from a MiG-25 kit. I fitted the smaller R60 here on the outer wing hardpoint and the originally available R33 missiles on the inner wing hardpoints. I clipped the upper wing of the uh, R40 missiles so that I could fit them such that they show recessed under the fuselage of the jet. The decals went on very well on the model. As you can see, this is the number 17 blue of the Russian Air Force. The Soviet Red Star decals conformed nicely to the wings. You can see that there were a number of small decals that required extremely delicate handling, but they went on well. Here on the tail section, you can see that the decals went on nicely onto the vertical stabilizer. You can see the serial number 92367 of the jet and the Russian abbreviation POCCNN which stands for the Aerial Armed Forces of the Russian Federation in case some of you want. For the weathering I added a gloss coat and then I used a very light ink wash to accent the panel lines on the upper and lower sides of the jet. Once the ink wash dried off I used some detailing with pencil to obtain the effect of weathering in the panels. I saw many pictures of the same version in actual service and noticed that even though the MiG-31s are almost 30 years old, they are maintained in pristine condition. The only place where I could see some wear and tear was on the exhaust nozzle, which I achieved by dry brushing some greasy brown and stippling of some white to obtain the effect of salting on the exhaust nozzles. Here on the tail section too, I applied a very light shading to achieve a light weathering. Finally, I leave you with a comparison to an SU-25 Frogfoot of the same scale and a 72nd scale Nat. And as you can see, the MiG in the smaller 144 scale looks larger than the Nat. It's a worthy comparison of the biggest fighter in the smallest scale to the smallest fighter in double the scale. And I must say the MiG-31 looks huge and beautiful. So that's it ladies and gentlemen. I enjoyed building this model and I recommend this for all levels of scale model builders. Thank you for watching.